Hello, everybody, and happy Canada's Agriculture Day. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And if you're joining us back again from the last tour, then welcome back. Uh, we are here today to go on some field trips. I'm, uh, I'm, my name's Madeline, and I work for Farm and Food Care Ontario, and I'm excited to be one of your hosts for today. And my name is Melissa, and I work for Agriculture in the Classroom Canada. Today, we are excited to be visiting farms from across Canada. Um, just an hour ago, we were in Nova Scotia with a chicken farmer named Amy. If you didn't catch that video, feel free to visit Farm and Food Care or Ag in the Classroom's Facebook or YouTube channels, and you'll find the video there. Um, and we were also visiting Ontario, um, Alberta, and British Columbia. Awesome. So not only is today a really exciting day because it's Canada's Agriculture Day, but we're also celebrating the launch of our brand new um, Real Dirt on Farming in the Classroom resource. Uh, this is geared to students in grades 7 to 12, and it explores the key areas of animal welfare, crops and plants, sustainability, agriculture policy, and more. And this project to put this educator guide together was a collaboration between Farm and Food Care Ontario, um, Ag in the Classroom, and was proudly supported by Farm Credit Canada. Awesome. So in the chat, I want you to let me know where you're joining in from. I've already um, jotted down a few. So we have Tanya's grade three class from Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. We've got um, James Nisbet School in Winnipeg. And we have a K-1-2 class from William Watson Elementary in Surrey, BC. So let us know in the chat where you are, um, where, you're where you're tuning in from. Also, just a few housekeeping items before we dive into our tour. All of these videos will be recorded and available um, afterwards. So if you have to leave halfway through or can't join all four, then they'll be available for you. Um, the resource is available in both English and French. Um, and if you would like to get your hands on print copies of the Real Dirt on Farming publication, you can contact your Agriculture in the Classroom um, organization in your province. Uh, there will be a live Q&A at the end of this session, so be sure to leave your questions um, in the chat and we'll be bringing those up with Janelle at the end. Awesome. Melissa, I see here that we have quite a few Ontario schools joining us now. Um, some shout outs for London, Toronto, Markham. So we're excited to have you guys. Um, we're, it's about time to start our first tour. So I am pleased to introduce you um, to Janelle. Um, Janelle is an expert. Um, she is an expert in all things egg farming. And Janelle is joining us from Ontario. Hi, Janelle. Hey guys, sorry, we have really bad internet out here. So um, what did I miss? Uh, we actually just got to you and just introduced you. So if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself and what we'll be seeing today. Sure. Well, happy Canada's Agriculture Day, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here. So uh, my name is Janelle. And uh, again, thanks for joining our tour. I'll be taking you on a tour of one of the barns that I work in regularly that has enriched colony housing. Uh, just a little bit about myself. So I am an industry worker. So I have been working for seven years for Gray Ridge Eggs and my job is a producer representative. So I have the luxury of floating barn to barn, helping with egg quality, hen behavior. Uh, I definitely help with chores when needed. I'm actually in a barn right now and I'm a little bit dusty here and have my dust mask mark, but that's okay. And um, I also work with many independent egg farmers as well. So um, I'm excited. I've had to pre-record the video um, just again, because of internet issues, but um, it's one of the barns that I work in regularly. So I can't wait for you to see it. Awesome, thanks Janelle. And like we said in our previous tour, many Canadians as well as many farmers don't have access to high speed internet. So um, very much like Janelle and Amy, it's difficult to um, record a live tour, so she was kind enough to pre-record one for us, but she will be live with us just as she is right now to answer any of the questions that you put in the chat. So um, just a reminder, as the video is playing, feel free to put your questions from your classes um, into the comments, and we will get to those after the video. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. 
Hi everyone, happy Canada's Agriculture Day. My name is Janelle Caldwell and I'm tuning in from Wellington County, Ontario to give you a tour of an enriched coop egg farm. I just wanted to thank Farm and Food Care Ontario and Egg in the Classroom Canada for asking me to do this tour. I'm very excited to be here. And um, just as maybe we're waiting for a few people to tune in, I just wanted to say that um, I am having to pre-record this video because I have no cell phone reception in this barn. Unfortunately, I would love to do it live, but I will be tuning in live with you guys after the tour to answer any of your questions. So please write them down. Um, but maybe while we're pretending to wait for people to sign in, um, I'll just go through a little bit of background about myself, what I do, um, and how I got where I am. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Janelle and I work for a company called Grey Ridge Eggs and I'm a producer representative. So I am the most wannabe farmer that ever did exist. So I'm thrilled to do, be doing this tour for you. Um, I really enjoy working in the poultry industry and chickens are very cool and very cute. Some people disagree, but I think they are adorable. Um, again, I uh, apologize, <laughs> it's a little bit strange giving this tour um, to my cell phone, but I will imagine that you are my 10 and 8 and 3 year old nieces and nephew. Um, and we'll maybe just go from there. So how I ended up in my job, um, getting to hang out in these barns is I went to the University of Guelph and I was in the Animal Science and Agriculture program. It was a four year program. It was so much fun. Um, I met so many interesting people and I'm just thrilled to be working in the agriculture industry. I actually didn't grow up on a farm and I just wanted to say that anyone tuning in from a classroom that anyone can be anything that they want to be. If you enjoy it, go for it. Go to school, um, ask for job shadowing, go to, go for tours. And um, if you enjoy it, you should definitely try to find a career in it. Um, so with that, I hope most people have tuned in. So as I mentioned, um, I am in an enriched coop egg farm right now, and I'm just thrilled to be giving you a tour. So I'll be walking through everything involved in um, the type of housing that the hens are in right now everything involved in caring for the chickens, collecting the eggs, biosecurity, and a little bit of food safety as well. So as we go, again, just write down your questions and if I need to clear anything up at the end, I can definitely do that for you. Um, I just maybe won't have my little, my little chicken friends with me during that part of the tour, but that's okay. So an enriched coop house is a type of housing that Canada has adopted uh, about five years ago now. It's in our code of practice. So the entire country is gradually adjusting to this style of housing. And it's very interesting. And I think the hens really enjoy it. It has a nesting box for them, perch rails, a scratch mat, and nice lighting as well. So I just wanted to show you, and again, my little hen friends, they are kind of, they're wondering what I'm doing with my cell phone here. So. Um, a few of them are hiding in their nest, but I wanted to show you this with these little red flats. This is our nest. And this provides, yeah, open up the little door here. This provides the hens with a little bit of privacy and they prefer to lay their eggs in a darker area and also in a corner actually. So I'll just open up the little curtain. You can see there's a couple of hens in there wondering why I'm peeking in. Um, but that's where they go every morning to lay their eggs. And then the eggs roll out of the cage, which is very important. If the eggs did not roll out of the cage, the hens could actually step on them, poop on them, peck them. Um, and we want to make sure that the eggs are all grade A's, uh, which are non-cracked, non-dirty eggs going to the grocery store. So we have the poop floor on a little bit of a slant, if you can see that. So the eggs roll out. They bump onto this wire. Here, let's find some eggs. I just have to shift, I just have to shift over one. One of my colleagues is collecting eggs today and I'm been the one in the barn checking feed and water. So I thought I'd tune in for you now. So you can see the eggs there it's just behind this little wire. That's just to help prevent them from bumping into each other. And then they roll out onto what's called an egg belt. And that is moving very slowly down the barn to the front where the eggs are being collected. Um, another aspect of this are the little yellow perch rails. You can see in the in the coop here that the birds birds love 
Birds love to perch. Sorry, that was a little technical difficulty, uh, especially at, at night time. So you can see there's crew trails, a light in there as well, and then little brown scratch mats. And what those scratch mats do, it provides the hens with a little bit of a different textured surface to go do and peck at, scratch around on, lay on, pretend to dust bathe. It just allows them to perform a few more natural behaviors in their house. And then the light in the coop is just above those scratch mats. The birds almost pretend to sun themselves a little bit. So they like having that light. And it also keeps the end of the coop nice and dim and private for them to lay their eggs in, which again, they prefer a nice secluded dim area for their egg laying. Other essential parts of the so you can see in the back, there's a little white pipe with little red drinking cups. So this is how we get fresh, clean water to our chickens 24 seven. So basically for a hen to drink, and there might be one over here thinking about drinking. Um, her, she just taps that little metal nipple, we call it a drinking nipple, with her beak and a nice fresh stream of water streams out to her beak is great. We want our hens to drink over 200 milliliters of water every day to be nice and healthy and have great egg production as well. Another part of their house, this is where their feed is. So you can see we call this a feed trough and we are able to dish feed out with a feed chain in the bottom of the trough. So it comes out from the big feed bins at the front through what's called an auger system and hopper system into the feed trough and then the chain moves the whole length of the, bar of the barn and spreads the feed to every single hen. So every hen has 24 hour access to feed and water and nesting and perching and scratching. Um, other than that, it's, uh, we give our hens 15 hours of daylight right now. These girls are 25 weeks old. They were placed in this barn at 19 weeks, which is the standard age when a hen starts laying eggs. So right now they're laying a slightly smaller sized egg. They're young. Uh, they're mostly laying medium eggs. And uh, right now they're at 96% egg production, which is incredible for that age. The goal will be 98, um, but we'll see how they do the next couple of weeks, making sure, really monitoring how much they're eating. We want them eating about 107 grams of feed every day. And I'll show you a little handful here. We call this a coarse crumb. And it's made of a mixture of wheat, corn, soybeans. Um, there's different minerals and vitamins in there. And also a very important mineral that we give the hens is actually calcium. That's what the hens put on the eggshells. So it's important to supplement their diet with grit for in their we call it their little gizzard muscle. Hens don't have teeth. So they use their gizzard to actually crush up feed and anything that they're eating. And then the shell rock in the diet is for their dietary stores of calcium to be put on their eggs. So any science nerds out there, if you wanna look into poultry nutrition, um, you can, there's a lot of really interesting um, pieces of information out there. And, and if you wanted to go to school for that too, there's always, uh, there's so many different types of jobs in agriculture. So. Definitely lots of research for those grade 11s and 12s who are tuning in. Um, what else can we do? So every morning, again, we check water, we check feed, we check the temperatures in the barn. It is a balmy 20 degrees in here, which is amazing. It's minus seven outside, so it feels like a bit of a tropical vacation in here with my little chicken friends. Um, it's COVID, so we can't travel anywhere. So I travel into the chicken farm. And um, yes, other than that, we need to, let's he start heading to the front of the barn and we can go and see what the egg collection system looks like. So a hen lays an egg every day and we have keep our hens in the barn for a year and right, we gather the eggs once a day as well. So because, again, they lay eggs one egg a day. Sorry, struggling here. They lay one egg every day. We gather the eggs daily because we package them into trays and we actually store them on in on-site refrigeration areas. Uh, they bring the temperature of the eggs down to 13 degrees Celsius. From there, the eggs then go to an egg grading station 
which is where the eggs are weighed, they're washed and packaged, and then sent out to the grocery stores or uh, consumers such as yourself to purchase. Eggs are sent to the grocery store from the farm within four to seven days, which is incredible. So we pick up eggs, at the eggs are picked up at the farm um, once or twice a week and they're graded very quickly and they're nice and fresh at the grocery store. So I'll just give you a little ooh, different view here as we go. So you can see the egg bells and the hens are wondering what we're doing. That's okay. <laughs> and for 25 weeks old, so these hens, they're quite young still. They just came into this barn about five or six weeks ago. And like I said, we keep them in here for a year. So typically a young hen can be a little bit excited, just like toddlers at home, right? So we do a lot of work um, just while we're doing chores in the barn to just walk the barn, desensitize them to different sounds, different people, different movements. Um, so I'm actually helping in, in what's called our pullet barn right now. So that's the uh, chickens that are anywhere from zero to 19 weeks of age. So they're the babies that will be coming into this barn after this flock. Um, so the babies are even a little bit excited as well. So um, essentially what I do when I'm doing my check is some sick dance moves down the barn and um, it's great exercise. <laughs> the birds really wonder what I'm doing, but it really helps them just get used to people walking through because it's important for our, our um, health checks that happen multiple times through the day. And we wanna be able to handle the birds with the least amount of stress possible for them. Um, just to make sure everyone's happy and healthy. So we'll walk along to the front. On that note, birds can create a little bit of dust if they do flutter. So typically I am wearing a dust mask, but because of the video, um, I am not. That's okay. I'll probably later on this afternoon, I'll, I'll put my mask back on. So I just wanted to take a peek at some eggs. Oh, here. Struggling here. So, oh, here. So, I'm sure many of you are often wondering where a double yolk egg comes from. And you can see I have two very different sized eggs here. One is a medium size and the other is a jumbo or a double yoker. It, it, it for sure is a double yoker. Um, double yokers come from young hens. So hens' bodies, the way their anatomy works, that they need a certain amount of light to lay eggs. So they need 14 to 15 hours of daylight every day to keep them in springtime day length to trigger their photoreceptors to lay eggs every day. And the way we do this, we do this with our lighting system. And then we put our hens to sleep at night. And um, in the morning when they lay their eggs, sometimes when they're really young, their bodies aren't used to laying an egg every day. So sometimes they accidentally just put two yolks in one egg. Um, event, and you can see that's the bigger egg here. So eventually their bodies get sort of on more of a routine, on a cycle, and it's consistently a single yolk in the egg every day. And gradually the egg size also increases to large and extra large as well over time. But we don't want that to happen too quickly. Um, it just happens with time as the birds are eating more and um, gaining on a little bit of body weight and age as well. Wander to the front, gotta keep myself on track here. I only have so much time for our tour. So there might be some squeaking sounds at the front. It's very standard, there's a lot of moving equipment. We are able to collect our eggs automatically. It takes about an hour in this barn. There's 15,000 chickens in this barn, which is a standard sized barn in Canada. Um, so the equipment allows us to collect within an hour so that we can spend most of our time making sure that the hens have everything that they need, doing health checks, things like that. So I will start talking a little bit louder shortly because again, it is a little bit loud, but it's very interesting to see this equipment. So I just want to turn my camera around here as we get to the end of our barn. You can see the eggs are all in a single file and we collect our eggs almost individually. So you can see the eggs are being separated here into our egg collection system. Very, very gently, 
gently feeding into an elevator. One at a time, eggs are very fragile. Going up the elevator and up onto our conveyor. Again, very gentle, trying not to bump into anybody. And then down the conveyor. And that takes us into our egg packaging room. And I'll be taking you guys there next. I just have to quickly change my outfit here and I will meet you back in that room. One thing I forgot to mention before I let you go, um, something else that's automated in this barn and in, in actually all chicken barns is we are able to remove the hen's manure as often as we want. So in the little coops that the hens are housed in, you can see there's a mesh floor for a reason. We want the hen's poop to go through down onto that manure belt. We are able to run those belts and remove the manure as often as we want. And that keeps the air nice and fresh and clean, ammonia free in here, which is just fantastic for the farmers, fantastic for the chickens. And it just keeps everything nice and clean. That's actually one of my favorite jobs to do. It's very satisfying, just cleaning everything up and um, again, a bit of a misconception. That's why we have the mesh floor and the birds, it's designed strategically so that the birds feet are always nice and supported. We actually see uh, very, very good foot health out of these barns. So, okay, I will let you go and I will be right back shortly. I'm now up in our egg packing room. So now that I'm not in with the chickens, I've taken off my coveralls. Um, and I have my COVID mask here as I will be working with my colleague, just showing you how we collect the eggs once a day from our barn. As I said, it takes about an hour, so I'll try to get this video really quick. I know I'm running out of time here. Um, so just like students in classrooms, I'm sure you've gotten used to wearing masks as well. Um, so have I in my workplace. So I'll just put that on and I hope you guys can hear me okay. We are in selfie mode. All right, so this, is our egg packing machine. Um, this is called a MOBA automatic egg packer. So I'll just go over to where the eggs are coming in from the barn. And I have my colleague here, Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> so you can see the eggs are coming in from the barn on the conveyor, onto the packer belt. And very gently feed packing machine. It's really excellent to have a machine like this to help us gather the eggs. It just, it, it takes about an hour to collect the barn and it just allows us to spend a little bit more time in the barn caring for the hens. Um, this machine is also designed to be very delicate, handling the eggs with care, uh, preventing any cracking from happening as well. So you can see them just feeding through really carefully. And then the machine is designed to bring them over and package them very, very gently into our plastic trays. And then my colleague Linda here is packing these stacks of eggs onto our plastic skins. This is how we package the eggs before they go to the egg grading station. Our farm gets picked up twice a week and those eggs are, when they get to the egg grading station on the refrigerated egg truck, they are washed they're weighed, they're sorted and checked for quality as well, and then packaged into egg cartons before they're sent out to the grocery stores. So it's a very impressive machine, lots of timing required. I am not a maintenance specialist, so that's why I have somebody that I can call and Linda can call as well if we ever have any trouble. And then you can see our extra supplies, and then into the egg cooler, where this is our refrigerated egg cooler. We maintain 13 degrees Celsius. You can see the cooling unit up at the top and a couple skids of eggs that are all ready for a refrigerated egg truck to come and pick up. Um, this barn is also dock level, so a transport truck can just back up easily to the barn and uh, pick up those eggs, maintaining the temperature because food safety is extremely important. We are producing food at this farm, so we have to make sure that the humidity and the temperature is very consistent, um, especially when we are in Canada, where we're in winter right now, and then it'll be hot summer before we know it. Uh, this room has to stay at 13 degrees, uh, very important. 
and um, from there, I guess that, that's our food safety. We've touched on biosecurity, uh, wearing coveralls and a dust mask into the chicken barn. Um, we've touched on the caring of the hens, everything that's entailed there. And I hope you guys enjoyed my tour. Thank you so much for having me. And um, please, I'll be tuning in right now if you have any questions to answer. And we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you so much, Janelle. We have a lot of questions coming in from students, but I have to say my favorite one was when you moved from the one location to the other one, someone said it was like you teleported. So <laughs> I think it is it is a very good thing that we had the technology that you were able to get those videos filmed ahead of time. Um, but I think we have a lot of questions, so I think we should probably dive right in. Um, sure. The first question that I wanna flag, do you enjoy being an egg farmer from Haley? <laughs> oh man, so I think I, if you guys didn't, couldn't tell already, I'm a huge chicken nerd. So um, I really enjoyed in school learning about the science behind poultry and how a chicken actually her body works. So, um, and getting to know the behavior of them uh, in my job has just been amazing. So. Um, again, a little bit more of a nerd moment, but every time I go in the barn, I love to greet the hens and I just think they're so interesting. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. I have a question from Tamara and I saw this come up um, or similar questions a few times. Um, do different color colors of eggs have different nutritional values? I had another um, uh, class ask um, why brown eggs um, have a greater nutritional value than white eggs. So maybe you can clear that up for us. Absolutely. So there are two colors of eggs that we sell to the grocery store, uh, white and brown, and they both have the exact same nutritional content. Um, the difference, sometimes when you're at the grocery store, you'll see omega-3 eggs or vitamin D enriched eggs. That is actually a special diet that a white or a brown hen can be fed. We work with the feed mills on that diet and uh, the science behind that as well. And that, that's how we get the different nutritional values. Otherwise, a white and a brown egg are the exact same nutrition. Awesome. Um, I've got a question here from Bria Hodge, and it says, do eggs have to be refrigerated? In European grocery stores, they are not in fridges. Why? Do you, can you answer that question for us, Janelle? Absolutely. So um, I've also seen that in Europe. It's very strange to see the eggs next to the cereal boxes in Europe. <laughs> um, so the biggest difference between Canada and Europe is that um, we wash our eggs. So when you wash an egg, you remove an, a natural microbial coating that a hen naturally puts on that egg. So if that hen was in the wild and she were to lay an egg that has that she wants to have a chick come out of it, it prevents bacteria from getting into the egg. Um, it's a rule with our um, with our food safety rules here in Canada, we must wash the eggs. When we remove that coating, we essentially unclog the pores of that eggshell, which if we didn't refrigerate them, bacteria could get in. So with refrigeration, it prevents bacteria from getting in. We have nice clean eggs and it's the best of both worlds. Awesome, thank you. That's a great answer. I have a, a question from Laura P on YouTube. She asked how big the hens are when they first hatch. Well, they're very small. So if you can imagine a large size egg, a chick comes out and she's only a couple of grams in weight. She stands maybe about this tall, um, very cute, very high pitched voices. Um, <laughs> so not very big at all. Okay, um, another question here um from sorry i've got them all up here um why do chickens like to lay eggs in the dark this is a good one well chickens are very private actually so when they have that sensation in the morning that they do want to lay an egg they tend to seek out a corner a quiet space and a nice dim spot that just gives her enough privacy and comfort that she can kind of wiggle her bum down into the ground and, and lay her eggs. So it's just the hen's preference. And with the style of housing that we have in our barn, um, it's great to be able to provide that that area for them, that nesting area. Remember when we were peeking in the curtain there. So they mm -hmm. do use it. Um, probably 95% of the eggs lay, or of the hens lay in the nest. Okay, very cool. 
Awesome. There's so many questions coming in. I know. Um, I, I did have one from myself, Janelle. I don't know if you'd be able to answer it, but I've always been very interested about the different sizes of eggs when you go to the grocery store and um, like medium, small, large jumbo. So I know you talked a little bit about it in the tour, but could you speak a little bit more about that? Sure thing. Um, so it just happens that when consumers go to the grocery store, they tend to prefer a large and an extra large size egg. And it just so happens that through a hen's uh, cycle, so she lays eggs for a year, and um, she tends to lay majority of large and extra large, which is great, as she gradually um, ages, um, as she ages as well, she gets a little bit heavier, as she's eating more, she ages, her body develops a little bit more. But at the very beginning, she actually starts by laying tiny little peewee eggs, and then smalls, mm -hmm. and then mediums, and then probably by about 35 or 40 weeks of age, she's laying primarily large size eggs. Okay, so it's kind of gradual then for her. Very gradual. And as I said in the video, um, it's monitored very closely on all of our reports. Uh, we do lots of egg sampling at the farm here as well. And uh, we have a feed chart. So it, it's all very much in tune with, with what the hen needs and what she'll be doing naturally. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I have another question, Janelle. Um, a few. Of, this has come up in a, the comments a couple of times. Um, so you uh, described one type of housing here in Canada, the most popular, but I know that there are a few others. Can you tell us how many types of housing are used in egg farming in Canada? Absolutely. So we do. We have enriched housing. Uh, we have free run housing, which is where the hens are loose in the barn. We have free range housing where the hens are able to go outside when the temperatures are warm enough here in Canada. And then we have organic as well, which is again, uh, they can go out into a pasture from the barn as well. Uh, but enriched egg farming is the most popular here in Canada. Um, there's lots of science behind it and all egg farmers in Canada follow basically egg farming rules called the uh, Canadian code of practice where all the facilities, depending on the type of housing, are all audited uh, very strictly and all the farmers comply by the Canadian rules. Awesome. Thank you. I've got a, cla or a class, a grade two class. Um, have you seen eggs break while on the conveyor and or packing? <laughs> Good question. That's a great question and I sure have. So um, probably one of the biggest parts of my job is an egg quality specialist. So when there's egg breaking problems, people call me and I come in and I help try to solve that problem. So as you can see in the video, there is a lot of timing involved as the eggs are rolling out onto the conveyor. We try to handle the eggs individually, but sometimes there can be a bit of a timing error or a few eggs kind of cluster up as they feed off the conveyor. Um, it can happen, but the majority of eggs, and I can say through a whole flock, we will have 95 to 96% grade A eggs coming out of that flock, which is amazing. The other small, um, maybe maximum 4% would be very mildly cracked eggs, a little bit of poop on that egg still. Um, mm -hmm. It maybe if it didn't roll away from the hen quick enough, but we do wash the eggs, but sometimes there's still a little left. We, we don't send that to the grocery store. So, yeah. Okay. Awesome. I Janelle, um, so I know that you are an egg farmer yourself. I think you called yourself a wannabe egg farmer. Um, and we asked Amy the same question. What types of um, people or careers do egg farmers work with to keep their animals healthy, their barns running um, the right way, or to get eggs from um, the egg farm to the grocery store? That's a great question. So I always say there's a team of about four, five, or six people working towards uh, the success of even one single egg farm. So it starts with the egg farmer. They work with a hatchery representative working on the genetics of the chickens that are in that barn. Uh, they also work with a feed nutritionist and feed specialist to make sure that the hens are getting everything that they need, really monitoring egg size, eggshell quality as well. And then I'm more so, my personal job is more as a, as a greater representative, so egg quality. So making sure that um, there's nothing going on in the barn that is maybe affecting, maybe the eggs are getting hung up somewhere, getting bumped or cracked. Um, in very rare circumstances, there might be a veterinarian call just to ask a few questions. Um, if you're just noticing something a little bit different in the barn, there's so many people involved. And um, it's amazing to see that, that level of teamwork out in the industry. 
Awesome. I have one more question, Janelle, and it was if if a student wanted to do what you do, what would you say, like, what would you encourage them to do? I know you kind of said if you like science in the video, that that would be something that they could focus on. Do you have any, if, if you were a student in grade, I don't know, five or six, what would you say to them? For sure. So a big factor for me, I wanted to work with animals and I had no idea how I was going to be able to work with animals. I'm a horse lover, um, but I, I know my horses are my extra extracurricular activities. So I went to school for animal science and agriculture because I knew agriculture, there's lots of animals involved. I was able to talk with a lot of people in different industries. I also met a lot of friends who grew up on farms and was able to question them as well. And then from there, I went to um, some different um, like career events, just talking with people. I was able to go and do a little bit of job shadowing as well. And one of my summer jobs, I actually got on the on a research farm. It was poultry and equine. So it was perfect. And actually, by the end of the summer, that was my first experience with poultry. But by the end of the summer, surprisingly, I enjoyed working in the poultry barns more than the horse barns, which is bizarre. But uh, just the science behind the different type of animal just really fascinated me. And as you can tell, seven years later, I'm almost going into my eighth year. It's just an amazing industry and uh, just being involved in the science behind the scenes as well. So like I said, anyone could be anything they want to be. Just go and do your research. Talk to people. Don't be shy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Janelle. I really appreciate you spending the time um, answering our questions today. Yeah, Thank and you so much, guys. And anybody who is still tuning in um, who has more questions, feel free to still leave them in the comments. We'll take a look and try to get back to you with some more answers. Another great resource for you guys is our Farm Food 360 videos. Janelle actually stars in a few of those. So if you visit www.farmfood360.ca, there's lots of different farm tours and including um, quite a few egg farming tours. So there's lots of great information about egg farming there. So thank you, Janelle. Thanks for joining us. It was a lovely tour and great answers to all of our questions that came in. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Guys, enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. All right. So that wraps up. Um, our egg farming tour. So we're, we're so thrilled that you joined us for this and we hope you caught the chicken farming tour earlier today. We have two more left. Um, we're next, we're going to meet a canola researcher in Alberta. And then after that, we'll be going to BC where we'll meet two beef ranchers. So um, join us back at 3 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Eastern for those tours. Awesome. And as uh, just a reminder that if you want a copy of the Real Dirt on Farming resource, um, it'll be available in English and French at the website below. I'll be sending an email out to all you teachers that are still tuning in with some more information about different ways that you can get involved in more agriculture education opportunities um, and also how to get in touch with your provincial member organization, your provincial agriculture in the classroom. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining and we'll see you in 20 minutes for the next tour. Bye, guys. Happy Canada's Egg Day. Bye.